The Westland Whirlwind, a twin-engine aircraft developed during World War II, holds a unique place in aviation history. Originally designed as a high-speed fighter, the Whirlwind showcased innovative features and demonstrated versatility in various roles. Although it did not achieve significant success as a fighter, its operational achievements as a ground attack aircraft and in anti-submarine warfare have left a lasting impact. From its unconventional twin-engine configuration to its contributions in aircraft design and technology, the Westland Whirlwind stands as a testament to the ingenuity and adaptability of aviation engineers during a critical era. The development of the Westland Whirlwind began in the late 1930s, when the British Air Ministry issued specification F-3735 for a high-performance fighter aircraft. Westland Aircraft Limited, a British aircraft manufacturer, took up the challenge and began designing the aircraft. The design team at Westland, led by W.E.W. W. Petter, aimed to create a fighter that could surpass the speed and performance of existing single-engine fighters. To achieve this, they decided to utilize a twin-engine configuration, which was somewhat unconventional at the time for a fighter aircraft. The use of twin engines allowed for a more compact and streamlined airframe design, reducing drag and increasing overall performance. The first prototype of the Westland Whirlwind, designated as the P.9-37, made its maiden flight on the 11th of October, 1938. It demonstrated excellent speed and maneuverability, validating the design concept. However, the Whirlwind faced some challenges during its development, including engine reliability issues and concerns over stability. Following further modifications and refinements, the Whirlwind entered production in 1940. The aircraft underwent several changes during its production run, including improvements to the armament and changes to the rear fuselage structure. The definitive production variant, known as the Whirlwind Mark I, entered service with the RAF in early 1941. However, the Whirlwind's service life as a frontline aircraft was relatively short-lived. The limitations of its twin-engine configuration became apparent, and the aircraft was gradually replaced by more advanced designs such as the Hawker Typhoon and the de Havilland Mosquito. In total, approximately 114 Westland Whirlwinds were produced before production ceased in 1943. Despite its limited operational role and relatively small production numbers, the Whirlwind played a significant part in the development of aircraft design and technology during World War II, showcasing the potential of twin-engine fighters and contributing valuable insights for future aircraft projects. The primary armament of the Whirlwind consisted of four 20mm Hispano Souza HS-404 cannons, which were mounted in the nose of the craft. The cannons provided the aircraft with significant firepower for engaging enemy aircraft, especially compared to others at the time. The Whirlwind was initially powered by two Rolls-Royce Peregrine liquid-cooled V-12 engines, each producing around 885 horsepower. However, due to ongoing engine development issues and reliability concerns, later versions of the Whirlwind were equipped with the more reliable and powerful Rolls-Royce Merlin engines. The Whirlwind had impressive performance for its time. It had a maximum speed of around 360 miles per hour and a service ceiling of approximately 32,000 feet. The aircraft had a range of around 750 miles and could carry a variety of bombs and rockets for ground attack missions. The Whirlwind had a wingspan of 45 feet 10 inches, a length of 38 feet 9 inches, and a height of 13 feet 1 inch. Its empty weight was approximately 8,760 pounds, and its maximum takeoff weight was around 12,250 pounds. When the Whirlwind entered service with the Royal Air Force in early 1941, its role as a fighter was limited, primarily due to the emergence of more advanced single-engine fighters like the Hawker Hurricane and the Supermarine Spitfire. The Whirlwind was deployed in defense of Britain against German bombers, but its performance in this role was not exceptional, and it was gradually replaced by more capable aircraft. It did, however, find greater success as a ground-attack aircraft. It was armed with bombs and rockets and proved effective in attacking enemy ground targets. The aircraft's speed and firepower made it a formidable asset in engaging armored vehicles, convoys, and other ground-based military targets. The Whirlwind was particularly effective during operations in the European theater, where it provided close air support to ground forces. One of the most significant roles of the Whirlwind was in anti-submarine warfare, or ASW. Equipped with depth charges and other ASW equipment, the aircraft operated in conjunction with naval forces to hunt and attack enemy submarines. 
The Whirlwind was primarily operated by the RAF squadrons, including No. 263 Squadron and No. 137 Squadron, among others. These squadrons were deployed in various theaters of war, including the United Kingdom, North Africa, and the Mediterranean. The Whirlwind saw action in operations such as the Battle of Britain, the Western Desert Campaign, and the invasion of Sicily. But, by 1943, the Whirlwind was gradually phased out of active service. Its role was superseded by more advanced aircraft such as the Hawker Typhoon and the de Havilland Mosquito. The Whirlwind's ground attack and ASW duties were taken over by other specialized aircraft better suited for these roles. However, the Whirlwind's design influenced subsequent aircraft development. Its twin-engine configuration provided inspiration for other twin-engine fighters such as the de Havilland Hornet and the Brigand B-1. The Whirlwind's design principles and lessons learned from its operational use contributed to advancements in fighter and attack aircraft design in the post-war period. Sadly, while no original Whirlwinds are airworthy today, a few examples of the aircraft are preserved in museums. Notable examples include the Westland Whirlwind HR-10 at the Royal Air Force Museum Cosford and the Westland Whirlwind Mark I at the Fleet Air Arm Museum in the UK. These preserved aircraft serve as a testament to the Whirlwind's peace in aviation history. In conclusion, the Westland Whirlwind stands as a unique and noteworthy aircraft in aviation history. Though its role as a fighter was limited, it found success and demonstrated its capabilities as a ground attack aircraft and in anti-submarine warfare. Its twin-engine configuration, innovative design, and operational achievements have left a lasting legacy. While production numbers were relatively small, the Whirlwind's operational performance and contributions should not be overlooked. It served as an experimental platform, allowing for the testing of various technologies and modifications that furthered advancements in aviation. What is your opinion on the Westland Whirlwind? Does it seem like it should have stayed as a heavy fighter, or should it have been more focused on ground attack roles? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed, then feel free to check out some of my other videos above. And as usual, thank you for watching and I hope to see you in my next video.